As you probably know, I'm a fan of creating authentication from scratch. But if I did choose a gem to handle the password-based authentication, it would be this one right here, Sorcery. I like it because it's very simple. It provides only about 20 or so methods that you can call to handle any of the authentication you need. And even though it's so simple, it's still very full-featured and modular, so you can choose which parts of the authentication you want, such as password resetting, activity logging, remember me, and so on. But it's all lower level, so it leaves it up to you to create the controller and view layers still, but that's the kind of abstraction I like in an authentication gem. Well, let me show you how this works. So here's the application we'll be working with. It's very simple, just a single welcome page here, and I also have a link to a secret page. You can see that if I click here, I can access the secret page. But I only want this secret page to be accessible from users who are currently logged in. So I need to create some kind of authentication. So that's where Sorcery comes in. The first step is to go to the gem file in the application you want some authentication in and add Sorcery. Surprise, surprise. And then run the bundle command to install it and then run rake sorcery bootstrap uh, to add the initial files. Now I will show you that in a little bit, but next let's generate a sorcery migration. And this we can choose which modules of sorcery to include here, such as the core module, which will be the what's necessary for simple password authentication. And we can choose other modules such as remember me. And you can refer to the readme of Sorcery for more information on the various modules. So we'll generate the migration for these two modules, which will create two separate migration files here. So if we open up that core migration file that was generated, you can see the attributes which are added to the user's table here. And you can see we have a username field and you may or may not want uh, for users to have a username. And this is completely customizable as well. So just for the sake of example here, let me show you how you can uh, choose to use only the email address here. So we can comment out our username field so our users will only have uh, an email address to identify them. And if you want to do this, you'll need to configure Sorcery to use the email field. And you could do that by going to the config initializers directory. You can see there's a sorcery.rb file here that was generated by the bootstrap. Now at the top of this config file, you need to specify which modules you want to enable. So we want to enable the remember me functionality to get that working. And notice there are many other configuration options you can specify here, and they're all nicely documented. Most of them we can keep at their defaults, but one we want to change here is the username attribute name. We want to change this to email because we are using that instead of the username field. And there are many other options here. Notice at the bottom here, it says our user class is user. Now we don't have a user model yet, so let's create one. So let's generate a model here called user and just tell it to skip the migration because uh, Sorcery already handled that for us. So inside this user model, to enable Sorcery, what we can do is call authenticates with Sorcery and add a bang at the end there. And this adds a number of methods onto the user model to handle the authentication. However, it doesn't add any uh, validations or protect any attributes, so it's up to you to add that functionality. I'll just paste in some code to do this. So I have an attribute accessible call here and several validations here. And of course, you'll wanna customize these to fit the needs of your application. Next, let's generate some controllers. So we'll create a user's controller to handle the uh, sign up process for the users. And then we'll also want to generate a sessions controller uh, to handle the uh, logging in for the user. Now this is very similar to what I showed in episode number 250 where I created authentication from scratch. So I'll go through this pretty quickly. So the user's controller will be pretty standard. We'll just build a new user in the new action. And then in the create action, we can just uh, create a new user from the given parameters passed in the form. And then the new user's template can be pretty standard as well, where we just have a form for creating a new user, show any validation errors, and just have email password and password confirmation fields when signing up a new user. The sessions controller is where things get more interesting. We have a new action here, 
and we don't really need any functionality in this controller action, so we'll just jump straight to the template. Now here you just need a simple login form, so I'll just paste in some code uh, similar to what I did in episode number 250, where I just have a form tag, passing in my email, password, and remember me uh, fields here. Now we just need a create action here to handle the login form. Now Sorcery provides a method called login, which can take three parameters. The first one being the username or email address if you're using that like we are here. The second one being the password that the user typed in. And the third one being the remember me checkbox if you have that enabled. Now this login method will properly do the authentication and return a user if the user is properly authenticated. Otherwise it will just be nil. So what we can do is say if the user exists, then they must be properly authenticated. So we can just redirect um, to the root URL and pass in a notice saying logged in. Now Sorcery provides another method called redirect back or to. And it behaves very similar to redirect to. However, if a URL is stored by Sorcery, it will redirect back to that URL instead of redirecting to the given URL specified. This is useful because if you uh, require the user login when they enter a page, then it will take them to the login page. And then once they successfully log in, it will bring them back to the page that they were at previously. Now, if authentication fails, then we'll just render our login form again. And also we'll display a little flash alert message and, and we'll use flash now because uh, it's not doing a redirect. We'll just say password or email or password was invalid. Now we still need some way for the user to log out. So let's make a destroy action here as well. And inside of here, Sorcery provides a method called logout and that's all we have to call. Everything else will be handled for us. Uh, we just still need to do a redirect to let's say the root URL with a notice saying logged out. And then we can go into our routes file and wire everything up. So I'll just replace these default generated actions with a few of these. So we have uh, various um, named routes here and a couple users and sessions resources to handle all of the functionality for authentication, similar to how we did in episode number 250. And to finish this off, we need some way for the user to access these pages. So let me add some links to the application layout file here. I'll just paste a few links here. And as you can see, we have this current user method available to us. So if we have a current user, then we'll just say that they're logged in and show their email address with a logout link. And then we have sign up and login links if the user is not logged in. Now it's time to test everything out. So we have our welcome page again here with our sign up and login links at the top. Let's choose to sign up. Works as expected. I'll type in a password and I've signed up. I can log in here with that same information. And then I can choose to remember me, log in, and now I'm fully logged in. And you can see, I can view the secret page, but if I log out, I can still view the secret page here. So I need to add some uh, requirements here to make sure that the user's logged in before viewing. Now the secret page is inside of the home controller here, and we can use a before filter that comes with sorcery called require login. So let's add a before filter here and we pass it to require login and only the secret page here. Now when this gets triggered, behind the scenes, sorcery is going to call a method called not authenticated, and it's a good idea to override that behavior inside of your application controller. So let's make a private method down here inside of our application controller called not authenticated. And then we can have any kind of behavior we want when the user authentication fails. So let's redirect to our root URL, or actually let's do our login URL here with an alert saying, um, uh, first login to access this page. Now let's try this out. I'm currently not logged in. And when I try to visit the secret page, it triggers that not authenticated action and I come back to the login page with the proper failure message. And when I log in properly, 
it's going to take me directly back to the secret page because it remembers that that's the page that I'm trying to access. And when it calls a redirect back or to call, it's going to take me back here because that's what's in the session. And that wraps up this episode on sorcery. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, even though I just showed a few features here, it comes with many more that I encourage you to try out. And uh, so if you're looking for an authentication library that's a little lower level than some of the other solutions out there, I encourage you, try it out.